Joe Biden actually said in his press conference, very rare event, by the way, that he's overperformed. Well, I don't know what kind of scale he's grading on, but wow, you know, everybody would be an A-plus student if we had a... <laughs> that kind of that kind of deal going. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Trish Regan Show. I'm Trish. Good to be back with you here on camera again. Thank you for all your well wishes. I've so appreciated all your support. Just a reminder, you can interact directly with me if you go to my Locals channel, which is on trishregan.locals.com. I've loved hearing from all of you. So thank you for all the kind, kind words. Um, it was uh, certainly an unexpected event, but uh, I'm glad I'm here. I'm glad everything's okay. And thank goodness for good doctors and good hospitals and good nurses. Anyway, uh, Joe Biden, the guy's like delusional at this point. I mean, half of America doesn't think he's mentally fit, more than half of America. He seems offended when that comes up. He is 79 years old, so climbing up there in age, and yet doesn't really seem to have all his faculties. I mentioned yet because I, I'm not an ageist. I believe that you can perform very well very late in life, but Joe Biden strikes me as a very old 79. I mean, he was probably a very old 39, a very old 29, and maybe the reality here is the guy's just not that gifted when it comes to communication. He's not that gifted when it comes to be able to, uh, to being able to formulate thoughts. I don't think he's that smart. I mean, I think his grades actually prove that. It's amazing that he's there. It's amazing that he's president. It's actually kind of a shame. Anyway, um, he, he's done a terrible job. America knows that. It's why nearly 40% of the country gave him an F on their report card. We talked about that in yesterday's program, but I think we should all just be blown away by the monstrosity that that press conference was yesterday. He rambled, he rambled, it went on and on and on. And he sat there and tried to feed us things like, you know, what a great job he's done. I'm sorry, but we've got 7% inflation in consumer prices. It's even worse when it comes to energy prices, of course. 59% more to heat your home this year than last 50% more for gas prices. Food prices have escalated. Housing prices have escalated, but that's not even counted in the inflation numbers. No, no, no. Anyway, we've got a real problem with our economy in terms of inflation. We've got a real problem with the supply chains. I know he doesn't want us to blame it all on him, but I'm sorry, who else? Who else out there? Yeah, the Federal Reserve carries some of this responsibility, but still, it comes back to Joe Biden, who's setting the tone with bad policies, and bad policies equal bad results, okay? One plus one equals two, Joe. Um, so we, we've got a bad situation there. You get a mess, a mess right now on the ground in Ukraine. We're going to talk about that. You get a mess at our border. Nobody's been talking about the border, for goodness sakes, lately. Well, Kamala is finally talking about going down to Latin America, because, you know, she's got to meet with the president of one of those countries to address the root causes of uh, this immigration disaster. Well, the root causes are that we've created an environment where we've made it so hospitable for people to come here. I mean, it just shouldn't be, right? Because, uh, I'm sorry, but you, you need to have consequences. And so if people are told they can come here and have a better life, I get it. Like, who wouldn't want to come here and have a better life? But you also have to be thoughtful about who you're bringing in, why you're bringing them in. And there has to be some kind of architecture to this plan. You know me, I'm not against anybody coming here. I agreed with Donald Trump when he said we should roll out the red carpet for the people that we want and the people that we need. And we believe me, we need them. All kinds of people from all kinds of different walks of life, all kinds of different educational backgrounds. I'm not saying, you know, you only take the PhDs. We need people, but... We need people coming here in the right ways. And so that's really, frankly, the root cause of this immigration problem, that we've created perverse incentives for people to come here illegally, and that has to change. Kamala Harris, though, you know, she, she did the round on the morning shows this morning, and she got a, you know, a little bit uh, snippy, snippy, <laughs> there's a word to use, with some of these reporters. Um, and, you know, it's, it's interesting because Typically, a lot of these reporters are just gushing and they can't say enough good things. But I think even the mainstream media has caught up to this reality that this administration is not doing a good job. I do suspect that this administration, the Biden team, is trying to pivot a little bit, put some of the blame on Kamala Harris. And she's too politically stupid to understand how to 
actually turn this thing around. I mean, you turn it around by actually doing stuff, right? Like by going to the border and taking an interest in some of these causes instead of complaining about how you've got so many hard assignments. Oh my goodness, goodness gracious, hard assignments. You actually have to deal with things like the border. Give me a break. I mean, this is what I think people get so disgusted by because there's a, a quality to all of us as Americans that I think we're kind of proud of, right? We're proud of our ability to work hard. We're proud of our ability to take on hard tasks. We don't want things handed to us just because we happen to check a few boxes. And so if there's any feeling that, you know, she just got there because she she checked off certain criteria, then Americans are immediately just, um, you know, repelled by that. And so I, I think that's partly what's going on. People want to see her actually do something. Nobody's Nobody's against wanting her to succeed, but she's in her own way. She won't get out of her own way. She's got a team that doesn't even want to be around her. They're all quitting left and right, right? So, so nobody actually wants to work for Kamala. I think that the handwriting is on the wall. This woman does not have a political future. Maybe she did at one time because, you know, she, she fit the criteria, but she doesn't have the gravitas. She doesn't have the intelligence. She doesn't have the leadership. She doesn't have the work ethic frankly, to do what she needs to do. And that's all coming out right now. So America sees through her. America sees through Joe Biden. America sees what a mess this situation is and why it's so important. It's so important that conservatives take back the Senate come 2022 and obviously take back the White House as well in 24. I think they will because I think Americans, you know what, they've kind of had it. They see through all of it. And look, we weren't born yesterday. Right? We, we know what's going on. We know when, in fact, we're seeing such disastrous results, disastrous results in our economic news, disastrous results on the, on the uh, international front, both with Afghanistan, now with Ukraine. And so it, it's important that I think we all think together about how we achieve some of these goals, which is one of the reasons why I'm a proud member of AMAC, and I want you to be a proud member of AMAC too. AMAC, which is the Association of Mature American Citizens, has nearly 2 million members. And this is a group that, by the way, um, you'll get lots of like free stuff, and, and I'll get to that in a second if you're a member, but this is a group that has conservative values and conservative principles. And it, and is standing up for that in Washington, D.C., so that American seniors are represented. Don't forget, American seniors get kind of lost in all this because as inflation goes up, as food prices go up, as housing prices go up, as gas prices go up, you know who that hurts the most? American seniors living on a fixed income, which is one of the reasons why AMAC is out there trying to change some of this. You know, they, um, they really are fighting for this freedom that we all need, that should be just um, intrinsic to being American, but yet is so much under threat. So they're out there fighting for this on the front lines every day so that we don't go in this socialist way with this out of control spending and this Build Back Better program that would just be a disaster. Congress, if it's up to the Dems, would actually put more and more and more legislation through to try and get all this spending. Well, what does that mean? It means more money in the system and more money in the system means more inflation which then in turn hurts everyday americans including seniors so midterm elections are so so important and unlike liberal groups amac is america's conservative conservative action oriented 50 plus organization fighting so hard every day in washington dc and across the nation for our seniors so i'm urging you to join this group now you're going to receive as i said some freebies some great membership benefits including amac discounts on hotels on travel on restaurants and your membership your membership remember supports your values so it's so important go to amac dot us slash regan r-e-g-a-n my name amac dot us slash regan again amac dot us slash regan to get your membership now it matters but kamala i really think has proven how you know some of these politicians that think that they can waltz in there and and be part of this wokeism nonsense are recognizing perhaps i hope that um you you need to actually have some follow through and she doesn't have any follow through it's it's all talk just like her boss and so the two of them are in kind of a bad situation i suspect that they will not be making a lot of rounds in the campaign trails come 2022 
this year because who the heck wants them? I mean, these guys are dead weight. And it's going to get even worse. We've now got the situation unfolding in Ukraine. I told you yesterday how we, we've learned that $200 million worth of equipment has gone to Ukraine to try and fight against Putin should he actually um, ignite some kind of military conflict there. And, you know, I just keep getting back to this. Why the heck are we in this spot? I mean, we went four years without being in this spot. It's in part because Putin does not want as you can imagine, you know, NATO right there in his backyard. So he's concerned because Joe Biden has expressed so much support for NATO that this now represents a security threat. I think in some ways what the other administration did, what the Trump administration did, perhaps smartly, was they they made NATO less of a threat, right? Because Trump was always like, this is ridiculous. I mean, why, why are we giving all this money to NATO? Um, and so by lessening the threat that NATO was, it kind of calmed things down a bit. So Putin didn't feel like he had to, you know, swagger around and, and, and show who's the boss. Well, now you've got Biden saying, oh, we love NATO. And Anthony Blinken, who's just a disaster, our Secretary of State, that's proof of that with what we saw in Afghanistan, more proof of what we're seeing right now in Venezuela, just a disaster there. You get the Chinese, the Iranians, the Russians all setting up shop down there, uh, thanks to Blinken and his lousy policies. And so now we're looking at Ukraine, and again, because of lousy policy and lousy messaging, Putin feels threatened, and now he's trying to exert, you know, some some influence on the situation. So this is really and truly a mess. If we get dragged into something else again, well, we have President Biden and his administration to blame. Again, four years without this problem, and now here we are. So think about that for a second when you think about what a lousy job this guy's doing. And then overall, I just want to point out something. You know, we've been watching the market, a lot more volatility this week in the market. Um, for those of you that, that don't know, my, my background is actually in business, in economics, and, and in finance. And my, my first job was actually um, on a trading desk, trading emerging market sovereign debt. So I, I tend to watch these things very carefully. One of my concerns right now, and I wrote an article about this, um, which you can go to my locals feed at trishregan.locals.com and you can see, you can also see it on my Twitter at Trish underscore Regan. I wrote an article about how we are now increasingly in jeopardy of a global financial crisis. I wouldn't have said this before, but the World Bank, David Malpez, whom I've known for many years, president of the World Bank, came out with a warning and said numerous countries really kind of, you know, emerging market developing countries, meaning very poor countries, have too much debt and they're not going to be able to pay it back. You see, normally the World Bank used to lend money, but, you know, hey, 2020 and 2021, with all that cash in the system, in part thanks to the Federal Reserve, all these hedge funds started lending money to a lot of these emerging market countries. And now the bills are coming due and the rates are resetting because interest rates are going up. It's just like in 2008. Remember in 2008, the whole housing crisis? All these people got loans leading up to 2008 that maybe, maybe shouldn't have had all those loans. I love the Nina loans, the no income, no asset loans. Well, there were a lot of those out there at that time. And then as soon as rates reset, well, what do you know, people couldn't afford to pay their mortgages. It's the same kind of thing now going on on a global scale. All this money has been lent to all these countries who now are saying, whoa, wait a second, how are we going to pay this back? I mean, you're talking about places like Sri Lanka um, and, and El Salvador. And so the danger is that some of these hedge funds, some of these institutions, private institutions that lent the money are going to uh, stumble when they don't get the money back. And the fear is if they stumble, what happens to the individual little guy, right? The investors, the American investors, retail investors, pension funds that are invested in all these things, did they then stumble? This is the domino effect that we have to be worried about. Now, the World Bank says that they're trying to sort of renegotiate some of these things and try and figure it out before it becomes a big, big problem. But I just want to alert you to it because as great as the market has been, and as much as I am a believer in the long-term health of the U.S. equity market, I 
I'm always on the lookout for any kind of credit crisis because that's a whole different thing than just an economic you know, recession that we hopefully can climb our way out of. A credit crisis really is, is a different animal. So I want you to watch that. Read my piece. You can go again to my locals page, trishregan.locals.com. I posted it there. And if you're investing in this market, just be aware of some of those outside risks. I just want to bring it up so that you know. Again, I encourage you, I urge you to subscribe to me. You can go to my website, trishantel.com, sign up for my newsletter there. You can go to my Rumble page. You can go to my locals page, Twitter, Facebook, all those places. But really, some some of my favorites right now, I'll just be honest, Rumble and Locals, because I'm such a believer in all of us being able to communicate freely, freely, without things getting suppressed. And so that matters. I think all of us kind of have to take this into our own hands right now, because we can't rely on some of these big tech companies to get our message out. We need to do it ourselves. So share this podcast, tell your friends about it, and come on over to Locals. I will see you there, and I'll see you back here on Monday. Have a great weekend, everyone.